وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور So uh, Sheikh, how is it advised Islamically by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to, to spend the first intimate time with my future wife as a first night? You know, this is a very important question. Yeah, you know, it comes from question. a person who do not have an experience. It's very, very important. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu teaches Lord. us that the first night and having an intimate relationship with your spouse in general is a very important thing. Number one, you do it with the intention of protecting your modesty, fulfilling and satisfying your desire in a lawful, legal manner. Accordingly, you receive a reward for it. Inshallah. Because the Prophet ﷺ has said once, sadaqah, For contacting your wife sexually, there is a charity. Yeah. And when the companion said, What? So the Prophet ﷺ said, What if he does it in haram? Would he deserve to be punished? This is certain. He said, Similarly, when a person avoids the haram and seeks what's permissible, Allah rewards him for that. Meaning haram is a foul play? Or is it no, I'm talking about having a sexual relationship in a haram way. Having outside, outside, marriage. outside of marriage. Oh, outside of marriage. You marriage. know, so one have to keep this in mind. Second, uh, this process has to start uh, very smoothly. Say the Zainab, uh, pre prepare the Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, for the wedding night. Then she invited the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to look at her. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat next to Aisha and he had a glass of milk with her. So he drank out of it. Then he handed it over to Aisha to drink. She was too shy, so she didn't drink. So Asma bint Yazid encouraged her. Take it from the Prophet Sallallahu He's your husband now. <laughs> so she did. And she encouraged her to drink after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then she did. Afterward, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, now we can pass it on to your friends and so on. This beginning gives a comfort for both the couple. Especially if it was the first time, first marriage, have no experience whatsoever. So it gives some sense of comfort. Uh, in the beginning. Yeah. So it's, it, it, to what I hear now, it's just the same as what my great grandmothers from India is doing it. That my grandfather used to give my grandmother's milk, like what Rasulullah did. Alayhi so salatu It's a good Allah. thing to do. Yes. Th there's one, one more thing I'll ask because the Indian has this culture from India, because my grandfather's come, that they used to put uh, amulets, you know, a kind of like a. Oh, wear a talisman, and, and weave. Yes, onto his neck. You uh, see, why would people do that? They would do it for the purpose of having a happy life, protection from Satan and from evil eyes and so on. Mm -hmm. They ask yes. that upon themselves when they <laughs> wear that. The Prophet sallallahu <laughs> informed us that one who wears talisman or amulets have committed shirk. Oh, because yeah. people believe that those objects <coughs> could provide <coughs> protection. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Why he teaches us, if you ever ask, ask of Allah alone. If you ever seek a protection, seek the protection from Allah alone because He's the only one who's capable to provide you with this kind of protection. Is there mm -hmm. a, a dua, a supplication that exactly. you can teach us about? And this? if you're interested in having, uh, you know, following the footsteps of the Prophet, mm -hmm. he used to do this and he taught us that on the first night you place your hand on the forehead of your wife and say, Oh Allah, I ask you of every good. You have put in her 
and every good nature you have created in her mm. and I seek refuge with you from every evil mm -hmm. and every evil nature you have yeah. created in her Allahumma inni as'aluka min khayriha wa khayri ma jabaltaha alayh wa a'udhu bika min sharriha wa sharri ma jabaltaha alayh such a beautiful supplication mm -hmm. you're seeking beautiful this God. protection and help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone mm -hmm. and Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Mas'ud got hold of a newly married person and he advised him the first thing to do is lead her in the prayer pray two raka'ah to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he blessed you with this uh, wife and to make it easy for you uh, to get married mm -hmm. yeah. then place your hand on her and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you every barakah and blessing in her and to protect you from every sharr and every bad thing in her and ask Allah to unite you in a good way yes. those supplications gives you and her an ease at the beginning mm -hmm. and you seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the support especially with the first approach because now you're totally uh, strangers to each other Mm. And now behind closed doors and all alone, she have left her family, you have left your family. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to leave uh, a bad uh, image or a bad Talk memory which would remain forever in mm -hmm. the mind. Also, uh, give an introduction to having this intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. Like foreplay. Well, uh, what we call it scientifically foreplay is prescribed in Islam. You're not, uh, you know, like animals, they just attack to satisfy their desires <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> not like that Sheikh. you know Abdul Rahman yeah, yeah. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu himself while he was the greatest man would kiss his wives yeah, yeah. hug his wives there's romance yeah. there's also a, a supplication for uh, for a person to to supplicate before sexual uh, yani relationship yeah, sure absolutely <laughs> yeah. and this supplication benefits not <laughs> only the couple but With the baby the offspring yes yeah, offspring. so after kissing and hugging and comforting your spouse and giving her uh, an environment making it romantic uh, easy for which her. is romantic but was and she's was ready for music, that without slow music of yeah course. Uh, she's ready for that kind of yeah. meeting but then, they then <laughs> right before the intercourse the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered us to say this supplication which is bismillah Allahumma jannibna shaytan wa jannib shaytan ma razaqtana in the name of Allah O oh Allah protect us from Satan and keep him away from us and if you give us a child protect him as well from Satan and his harm the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that if one says this supplication before having an intimate relationship with his spouse if they would have a child afterward Satan will never be able to harm that child you know what I've so known. there you get a divine uh, assurance and insurance to protect yourself and your children as well from mm -hmm. a shaitan you know what I've noticed about the the, the, the foreplay that we're talking about <laughs> is it's 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 turakats it's dua mm -hmm. it's you're basically setting your house up for the religion you're setting up your your you and your wife to start having a lifetime together of a bada, a worship to Allah subhanahu wa taala, mm -hmm. to have children so that you can teach them how to worship Allah subhanahu wa taala. Correct. It's a everything is moving. Everything in Islam leads to that direction. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a step to move closer to Allah. It's a uh, beam. Yeah, everything is a, is a is a move closer. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's why when one puts in mind that. I'm having this relationship in a halal way and I'm receiving mm -hmm. a thawab, he enjoys it and he also receives a reward for it. Mm -hmm. So he satisfies his or her desire mm -hmm. in a halal manner. Meanwhile, this is an act of worship, like mm -hmm. every other act of worship which we do. Mm -hmm. So you get, you get rewarded two ways, basically. Exactly. You get both to your <laughs> have your and cake and eat it too. <laughs> and I heard <laughs> Sheikh, uh, like, there's a hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu like, says in it that when when someone gets married he he like uh, fulfills or completes his religion something like that I know what you mean uh -huh. well when a person is not married and he's a normal human being he has the same hormonal balance where he's attracted to the other gender his heart and mind is occupied 
is occupied with thinking of the other gender. Mm -hmm. He has a need he wants to fulfill. The heart belongs only to Allah whenever a person is righteous. But that feeling and this desire is occupying a part of his heart. Whenever he gets married, he satisfies that and his heart is totally for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. It is very, very important, the Prophet sallallahu so, says, O oh, young men and mm -hmm. young women too, whoever is capable to get married amongst you, let him mm -hmm. get yeah. married. Yeah. Because it helps you to lower your gaze mm -hmm. and protect and give, uh, guard your modesty. Mm -hmm. And give stability. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. we have to discuss a very important thing, which is, when people sometimes share their private life, their most private life with others, mm. and sometimes they're very proud of that. Mm -hmm. They think it's cool, you know. Uh, I, I once attended a meeting where somebody was asked, uh, next morning after his wedding, how was it? So the person right away started talking about, you Everything. know, his most private life with his uh, wife. I, mean, he's telling I had to stop him right away. Because once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting and Asma' bin Yazid was mm -hmm. sitting as well. He was addressing a gathering of men and women. Mm -hmm. And he said, perhaps one of you uh, would have an intimate relationship with his wife. Then would come and reveal that in public to others. And mm -hmm. perhaps one of you would have a relationship with her husband and share that with others. So the people were quiet. But Asma said, certainly, Ya Rasulullah, many of them do that. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was so disturbed. And he said, you know what? That's exactly similar to a Satan, meta female Satan. And they had committed a sexual relationship in front of everyone in public street where people are watching. Mm -hmm. So this is the most private thing. It should be yeah. kept between you and your wife your wife only should not be revealed under any circumstances mm -hmm. except of course if there is a medical need to share with a physician and, and plus another person. what about the, the situation of person who have three wives or four wives now they have he's doing this for his wife and he's doing that for his another wife and they are between wives they do that spell each other what he did is that also not even with your <coughs> family members that's the most private thing between you and your spouse should not be spread out, should mm -hmm. not be disclosed to no one. Mm. So even brother believe. has four wives, those four wives should keep their mouths shut. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, he, he does better on the first one, he didn't do better than me. On the so, <laughs> yeah, no. so we understand that even this kind of relationship, which many people uh, try to avoid talking about it, we have to address it uh, in a legitimate manner. We have to share with you and especially with you Abdul Rahman uh, the, the, the traditions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he taught us in that respect which I hope that will help you insha'Allah yeah, uh, in beginning a happy and good life. Let me Amen. ask you a question. You wanted to drink Nescafe? Yes, you know, yes, yes, yes. You yes. wanted to drink uh, Nescafe? No. Tea. tea? I'm fine. Jazakallah. You're fine. Are you sure? I'm going to ask you two times. So you're fine? Shukran, Jazakallah. Okay, fine. Okay, I'm going to go get some drinks. Barakallah. <laughs> <laughs> Islam. Anyone who chooses other than Al Islam as a religion, as a way, it won't be accepted from him. This Quran has to be understood by the way the companions of Rasulullah understood the Quran. We disconnect ourselves from the actions of certain Muslims who oppress people and kill people unjustly. Yes, sir. Well, anyway, thanks for the cough. Hey, my pleasure. Well, I'm gonna, we're going to ask you something about for Abdurrahman's sake, you know. What is the, uh, you know, permissible and non-possible sexual relationship with the wife? Well, you're sure that's only concerning <laughs> Abdurrahman. <laughs> <laughs> well, All I, of us, I've been yeah. 45 years old, so I've been long <laughs> away. <laughs> you know, I have to share with you the fact that many people have been married for years, sometimes for decades, 
and they're not very aware of the answer of this question. Mm -hmm. And uh, they come to us this question after it's too late. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Nisa'ukum harusun lakum fa'tu harusakum anna shi'tum. Your women are your tilth, like your tilth. So you may embrace them whichever way you like, from wherever you like. That ayah uh, explains your wives are permissible to have whichever sexual position with them you like. But the Prophet ﷺ explained what that means. It means as long as you're embracing your wife in the proper place, where if you embrace her there, you might have a child huh, and mm -hmm. impregnate her, that's permissible. But when he was asked about embracing one's wife from the back passage, the Prophet ﷺ said that's forbidden. And he said that, peace be upon him, that Allah does not look at one who embraces his wife or contact her from the back passage. He also said, peace be upon him, that one who embraces his wife while she's having her menses or from the back passage or visits a fortune teller and he believes him, mm -hmm. he indeed have disbelieved in what, in what was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's one of the major sins to do that. Mm -hmm. There is a confusion in this area where people say, so that means contacting one's spouse from behind is haram. Mm. No, no. Not I say the, the position is okay. The position is okay, if it's but the back passage part. is one of the major sins. It's, it's exactly. the aim. <laughs> Unfortunately, in many gatherings, even in religious lectures, people are too shy to discuss this. Yeah. And accordingly, they're not informed, and they may do that out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. And that's why, Abdurrahman, I think your question is right in position. Thank exactly. you so much for asking this what question. What about I even heard like the, uh, we should, my bad that we shouldn't be be shy when it comes to religious questions. Absolutely, especially exactly. asking questions which are related to your daily life. You're some you're brothers are shy, and then they they, they fall into ignorant sins. sins. Yeah. So and that's not an excuse. He mentioned exactly. the, the, the minutes, the, the period of, of your wife. Now, what is permissible for you to do when your wife is on that period? I mean, is there a, a something, that not sex, obviously not um, intercourse, because, Johnny, that this is haram. Yes. But is there something that we can do as a husband and wife to still remain intimate with one another during these three to five to seven days? You know, followers of other religions and cultures, uh, they really ignore the rights of women to the point that some of them uh, used to consider a woman not a human being, mm -hmm. have no rights whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived to al Medina, mm -hmm. the people of the scripture used to treat a wife, especially during her menses, as an impure object so that she would be totally isolated, she would not even socialize with the rest of the family, she would not cook for them. Mm. The Prophet ﷺ once was asked about, what can I do with my wife if she is having her period? Mm -hmm. He said, do everything except intercourse. What does it mean? Kissing, hugging, enjoying your wife, having whatever, as long as you can control yourself. We have to keep in mind that it's not only you as a husband who have needs and desires. It's also the wife, right? Mm -hmm. And this desire is not interrupted simply because she's having the, the, her menses. No, it's continuous, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So you should treat her as your wife still. The Prophet wasallam, whenever he wanted to embrace any of his wives during the menses, but not sexually mm -hmm. uh, or sexual intercourse, he would make sure that his wife would be covered the lower part, mm -hmm. then he can embrace her from the upper part by mm -hmm. hugging and kissing and so on. Well, mm -hmm. the, the relationship is always on a two place, two play. I'm talking about. So you have one one on the other side cover up, which you only can uh, do on the upper part. So the other side, the man, he has his own own to to be played too. You understand? Yeah, you know exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, do you find, um, you know, because you are you know a doctor, <laughs> do you find that uh the men, the needs of women 
are different from the needs of, needs of men. As I, because I find like like uh, for me, this is just me talking per- personally. Women uh, seem to be this is my opinion on women only, not not anyone specific, but on <laughs> women only that they tend to be more emotional and they tend to to need more emotional loving than say men do. That's absolutely true. Women are more emotional, and that's why they need more attention than yes. you. And that's why it's very important to notice that. Mm-hmm. Not just because you're uh, fine and you don't feel anything, that mm-hmm. they should be the same. No, mm-hmm. you should pay attention to that. Being loving, caring, being mm-hmm. gentle is commended. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have noticed that even during uh, the period. I mean, the Prophet sallallahu was married to more than one. It was very simple for him that if he needed to have a relationship, an intimate relationship, to go to any of uh, his wives. But also, that wife, during that pe- period, Mm-hmm. She needs some attention. So the Prophet ﷺ would observe that. And this is a message for all of us. One more question, Sheikh. Uh, regarding about a man who, uh, who t- has have his wudu and when he kisses his wife, does that nullify? Just imagine that uh, <laughs> trying to please your wife, going back and forth, coming into the house, leaving the house, getting mm-hmm. up in the morning, yeah. uh, maybe kissing and hugging his wife, that would require you to perform wudu every time. That means yeah. it's either one of two things. You're either you will just <laughs> not. <laughs> you will keep running back and forth, making wudu, yeah. or you will uh, give up on kissing her. Yes. No, but the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> so which one would you choose? No, I'd rather uh, do wudu and kiss <laughs> That's interesting. The Prophet ﷺ uh, was recorded as every time while leaving home, he would kiss his wives. Mm-hmm. And he was not, not after kissing his wife that he would perform wudu. He went to the masjid. With exactly. Other tool. Mm-hmm. In addition to, I just mentioned earlier, that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said that the Prophet ﷺ and I used to take a bath in the same place and from the same water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that means that they would uh, touch each other's bodies, mm-hmm. right? Mm. However, after this ghusl, which included wudu as well, the Prophet ﷺ would not perform a new wudu. That would be sufficient to lead the prayer with it. Mm-hmm. So that means, mm-hmm. in the right opinion, because I understand that where you come coming from, yeah, Ahmed, <laughs> there are different schools of thoughts, mm-hmm. but the right thing is touching your wife and uh, kissing her, would not nullify your wudu. So no, feel free to do so. I've noticed also that a lot of brothers are, are kind of harsh on their wives. They're kind of, they, there's no gentleness, there's no rahmah, there's no mercy when it comes to the wife. And they say, this is the way the Prophet uh, treated his wives. Now we say, Absolutely no, not. this is not the way he treated his wives. Absolutely. Can you explain on that? For the, the Prophet so was know? the most gentle person mm-hmm. to his wife, particularly to his wives. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would give them like uh, pet names, like what he did with uh, Aisha. He used to call her Ya Aish. Huh? And he is the greatest man on earth. Peace be upon him. And he has so many duties to take care of. However, he would not ignore the duties of his spouses, his wives, his houses. He would pay attention to everything and keep balance between his house needs and Ummah's needs. Okay. And the rest of the community, of course. And the Prophet Sallallahu upon returning from one of the battles, uh, he asked everybody to move further away from him. Then Aisha was accompanying him on the journey. Mm-hmm. He said, Ya Aisha, would you race me? Race? Mm-hmm. The Prophet Sallallahu with all those duties and responsibilities, she agreed. And they did race each other. Of course, Aisha won. She was young and light. <laughs> <laughs> Years later, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam happened to be with Aisha mm-hmm. upon returning from a journey. And he said, Ya Aisha, would you raise me? So Aisha had forgotten about the earlier incident. She agreed. But this time Aisha had grown and she become heavier. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam won the race that time. <laughs> and he said, Ya Aisha, hadihi mm-hmm. bitilk, or even. <laughs> Aisha said, oh my God, you still remember? <laughs> you know, paying attention to the needs of your house your wife, of your children is essential and keeping balance between uh, you know, taking care of everything at once is a fantastic thing would guarantee happiness in that's, your house. That's for the young guys if I go and tell my wife you will race me, you're crazy <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll race you to the refrigerator <laughs> there is no age limit as long as you can do it, as long as yeah. you can have fun and spread the, you know, the spirit of fun at home <laughs> Halal fun actually is an act of worship. Yeah, right. The Prophet yeah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that he that. counted <laughs> and considered uh, playing with your wife, playing with your spouse mm. and having fun with her mm. 
is an act of worship. He considered training your horse is an act of worship. Racing is an act of worship. Working? Uh, swimming mm. is an is act of worship. Yeah. All what you need is just an intention. Why do you do that? For mm. what purpose? Whenever you do it for the purpose of Allah. satisfying your need and giving fun to you and to those who are around you in a halal mean that's an act of worship act where you see the reward for it. Can mm. you imagine? Allah. He said, peace be upon him, that uh, awesome. whenever <coughs> you put a bite, a food, Mm -hmm. In the mouth of your wife, that's a charity. Mm -hmm. What could be better than that? The romance in, in an Islamic marriage then is a charity. That is... Aren't you we cannot find that <laughs> any, any, in any religion. You're a romantic guy. Don't you have a you have poem there you want to read? You want to read oh, yeah. for it? Yeah. Okay. You, you already wrote something. Yes. I wrote okay. something. It's kind of small. It's about some points of, on the Islamic marriage. So I'm like, Islam is the truest success potion for marriage beside beauty, high social class, and fortune. It makes the marriage last because Allah's blessings are involved and the feelings get stronger fast. And in Islam, so that no one misunderstands, we got to have the approval of the future wife. Like what the Prophet, peace be upon him, Sallallahu said Allah. as to bless the married life. And these small simple points add to the Sheikh beautiful words. Words that are as beautiful as this house, your house, <laughs> and as it's beautiful birds. <laughs> That's very interesting. Thank you so much for the compliment. You know, um, Abdul Rahman, uh, I'm very, very pleased that Alhamdulillah you're making this decision and you're uh, looking and we're all praying for you and we'll help inshallah. you by every means we'll make to make this come true. But most important, to be aware of everything we discussed beforehand inshallah. that would really, inshallah, make your future life a happy life. Let's we'll pray eat. for you. In Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu alik.